So you're getting to know GA4 for the first time and you'd like to make your first dashboard. A place where you can revisit each day or each week, a place where you can uh, kind of see all the information, all the basic information in one glance. Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you how you can do that step by step. Building a report can be overwhelming at first because you might not be familiar with all the terminology that's involved in building dashboards. But if you follow this guide step by step, you'll be able to do this even if you have no experience in Google Analytics. Let's dive in. So welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make better decisions with your analytics data. If you like what I'm doing, please click like or subscribe to the channel. That really helps me get this channel off the ground. So we're inside of Google Analytics 4. Uh, I'm gonna go into reports and by default, your GA4 will look something like this. You have a couple of collections like lifecycle or user and it might look a little different based on when you've set it up and, and, your, and your situation. And these, but you will have some basic reports in place. And these basic reports are really good. I recommend you learn these because they uh, include all basic information. But if you want one screen that contains all your basic information that you can revisit every day, we will need to build our own. And we're gonna start doing that by going into library. By the way, you need sufficient uh, user permissions to access this, but if you, have, if you are the owner of the account, that shouldn't be a problem. So let's go into library and make our own collection. And we do that by going under collections and say create a new collection. And we're just gonna create a blank a collection and we're gonna call it dashboard because we just want one screen that contains all our basic information and under topics I'm gonna say dashboard apply so we're gonna create an overview report that will be the dashboard with all the kind of blocks with with basic st statistics and we're also gonna create a detail report that accompanies the, our dashboard so we can click through and like dive a little deeper in the data so I'm gonna save the collection. I'm gonna click back. And you'll see that the collection is not there right away because we're gonna to need to publish it. So now that I've published it, I see that it's not there either. And that's because it's still empty. We need to make a report first, put it in the collection and then it will show up. Before we're gonna create our dashboard, we need to kind of make a list of what we want in our dashboard. And probably some basic things that you will need in your dashboard are, for instance, uh, some uh, traffic sources. So under traffic acquisition, this information we'll probably want in our dashboard. Where do our visitors come from? So I'm just gonna make a small list. So I'm gonna open up a small document and I'm gonna create a list. And this is a tip that really is very useful, especially if you're just starting out in analytics. These names are really important if you want to create your own dashboards. So for instance, if you like the way this looks, organic search direct, this is the way you like your traffic sources. Or for instance, you are more used to like source medium, kind of the UTM notation, source medium or campaigns even, then you need to write down these words. I like for this basic report, for this basic dashboard, I like this notation. So I'm just gonna write down session default channel group so later on in this video you will see why we're doing this for now just follow along trust me this is really useful so session default channel group that i'm gonna need that and also i want users and engagement rate And I want conversions. I don't have a revenue, but if you have revenue, you should probably put that on your list too. So th the point is not to follow along exactly what I'm doing. The point is go into the most useful reports and write down the things that you want to use in your dashboard. I've written down this from this report. So I have some information on traffic sources. So the second thing that will probably be on your list is like what content are people actually viewing on my site? So that information is under engagement and then pages and screens. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing here. So by default, I like this view. You could also choose page title that will show the titles of all your pages. I like this representation, like the, just the, the URLs. 
So on my list, I'm going to say page path and screen class. Because that's the word that's up here. And I'm also writing down views. So average engagement time, that should be also on my list. Average engagement time. Another thing that I really like to have in a dashboard is like what kind of devices are people using to view my site. I, I don't mean iPhone, Android devices, what specific model they have. I just mean desktop, mobile, tablet. Well, that information is under tech. And then we could go into overview, tech overview, and then we'll see it. Here, users by device category. I'm going to click through here. Device category. That's the term that I'm going to need when building my report. So device category. Maybe you'd like to know where your users are viewing from. So like what geographical location, for instance, country or uh, region. Uh, that's under demographics. So I'm going to go into demographics and an overview. So I could go into uh, users by country. Uh, or, but for me, city is a little bit more useful. So I'm going to go into users by city. So city, that's the dimension that I'm uh, looking for. So now that we have our list, let's go ahead and build our dashboard. And we could do that by creating a blank report from the start. But I'm going to go into the traffic acquisition report because that's the first on my list, traffic sources and I'm gonna build it from there. So we can adjust this report by going into customize report. If I change it and save it, it will overwrite, but I could also change it and save it as a new report. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna start by kind of removing some things I do not need. For instance, in the list of dimensions, there is a whole lot of things that I don't need. I don't need session medium, so I'm gonna remove it. Session source, source platform, I'm gonna remove it. I'm going to leave session campaign, but this list is already a good starting point. Under dimensions, I'm going to enter all the fields that I wrote down, all the fields that are kind of the first columns. So page path and screen class was the first column of the content report. So I'm going to try to enter that here. Yeah, there it is. And device category was also a first column. So I'm going to enter it here because the first column of the report is called a dimension. It's how you kind of split up your data. And city is the last one, so I'm gonna also going to edit here, city, and then I'm going to click apply. Under metrics, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to first clean it up a little bit. So user sessions is, is really useful. Engage sessions, not so much effort engagement time per session. That one is kind of nice. So you see how long are people viewing the site. Engage sessions per user, no. Nah. Events per session, no. Engagement rate, yeah, that was actually on my list, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, event count, no. Nah. Conversions, yes, that was also on my list. Total revenue, I'm going to remove it because I don't have a web shop. You likely want to keep it if you have like revenue coming through on your site and you're actually tracking it. So total revenue, I'm going to remove it. And then I have some other fields that I wrote down from my list. So for instance, views and average engagement time. Engagement time we, we kind of have, we have it per session, which is kind of fine, but views I do not have yet. So I'm gonna edit here, views, and I'm gonna put it below session. So I have user sessions and I have views. Let's see if I need something else, average engagement time. So let's put this here, let's remove this one so we don't have duplicates. So now I have users, sessions, views, average engagement time, engagement rate. I'm gonna put this above here. So engagement rate and average engagement time and conversions, which is really nice. It's everything I need. I'm going to hit apply. Now under charts, I can disable and enable charts here. I can choose what I want, but the line chart, the bar chart is fine by me. So report template, I'm going to unlink it by clicking here. Because if I keep it linked and if GA4 kind of updates the template it's based on, it will override all the things that I just imported. I do not want it. I want to keep this report as it is. So I'm going to unlink it uh, so it will stay the way I made it. And the summary cards, and this is really important. So this is the place where we need to make the small blocks that are on our dashboards. We are going to prepare it here. I'm going to delete this one because I just want to make and create and come up with 
all the blocks ourselves. So a dashboard is a screen with blocks on it, graphs, timelines, pie charts, uh, bar charts, things like that. And what we do here, we're going to prepare all those blocks so we can include it on our dashboard after this. We're going into create new cart and something that I really like to do is make a timeline. And with a timeline, you only have a metric, which is kind of a, the, the number that you have. So for instance, users, I want the total users over time. So I can just see in one glance how many users did I have yesterday and the day before. This is all I need. I want for the first block. So I'm going to click apply users over time. And from this, we're going to make a lot more of these cards. So for our next card, I want the users but I want it split up over the, the traffic sources. So kind of what are the top traffic sources that are driving traffic right now on our site? So I'm gonna add a dimension session default channel group. That's the, the field that I listed from the traffic sources. So session default channel group, and I'm gonna make it into a bar chart. So I have this view, organic search, direct referral email. So this, these are the, the traffic sources that are driving traffic to my site. And this is a really nice card to have on our dashboards. I'm gonna hit apply. Also, I like a list of all the pages that people are viewing, like the top 10 most viewed pages. So I'm gonna create a new card and I'm gonna say page path, because that's the field that I took from the content report. So I'm gonna choose page path and screen class. And I'm gonna say views. What are the most viewed pages on my site? And I'm gonna make it into a table. It's not top 10, but it's top seven most viewed pages on my site. And again, this is really useful to have on the dashboard that we're making. So again, I'm gonna hit apply and we're just gonna continue preparing our dashboard. All the cards that we need when building the dashboard, we're gonna add them here. So I'm gonna create a new card and this time I want mobile desktop tablets. I want a pie chart of what's the device category that people are using when viewing the site. So under dimensions, I'm going to say device category. I'm going to say users. And I'm going to say pie chart. It gives me this. I'm going to hit apply. Well, I can continue doing this. I want to know where are my visitors from, what city. So city users. Now I can create another bar chart or I could, could turn it into a table. I think a bar chart is quite nice. So I'm going to hit apply. I could make another timeline of just the conversions. So conversions over time. So that shows me when was the last time that I had some kind of conversion on my site. Now I'm going to hit apply. Well, I think you could go on and on. You could make it a lot bigger, but I think you get the point. We need to prepare the cards that we need on our dashboard, we need to prepare it right here. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to hit save. This is really important. Do not click save changes to current report because that will override the default report and the default report needs to be there. It's really good, but we want to save it as a new report. So I'm going to click save as new report. I'm going to say dashboard detail report. Now I'm going to click save. Yeah, there it is. So I can go back. And as you can see, here is my report. It's not in the list yet. We need to add it to our collection. So I'm going to go back into library. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look under collections. I'm going to look for the collection I made at, at the beginning of the video. Oh, here it is, dashboard. So I'm going to edit it. And from the section on the right, under detail reports, I'm going to look for dashboard detail report. This is the report that I just made. A couple of seconds ago, I'm going to drop it over here. So I can note that I can only drop it here, drop detail report, because this is a detail report and I'm, I'm going to click save. We can save this to our current collection because I just, I don't want to save it as a new one. I just want to override the dashboard collection that I made. Now we're ready to make our overview report, which is a, a screen that contains all these graphs that we just prepared. To make this, we go back and we go under create new report and we say create overview report. Here we are. And now we can add our cards. And in this section, you will probably find also your default collections, lifecycle user, but you need to find the collection that you made based on this video. So I made a collection with the name dashboard and under this header, you will find all the cards that we prepared just a couple of minutes ago. And I'm just gonna import them all because I know I want all six. And I'm gonna add these cards and it will fill out 
our overview report and it looks really cool you can already see it i want the timeline first so i'm going to drag it up users over time then i want my channel groups so users by channel default group there you go i want my pages and then the rest of it so uh, maybe conversions over time is also kind of important like when were my last conversions used by device category uses by city i really like this so i'm gonna hit save i'm gonna say dashboard overview i'm gonna click save now we created our dashboard overview oh sometimes it does this so just save it again save changes to current report yeah there you go let's go back so we need to go into our dashboard again, edit it. And now we can, under the section on the right, we can find it under overview reports. We can find our uh, dashboard overview, save, save changes to current collection. And then we go back. And because our collection contains actual reports now, we have our collection on the left here. So dashboard, and then I click here, dashboard overview, dashboard detail report. If I go into dashboard overview, it will show me the dashboard overview report that I just created. So I have users over time. I have the channel groups, like the traffic sources on my site. What channels are driving most traffic? What pages are people watching the most? When was the last time that people converted on some conversion? What devices are people using? And what cities are people watching the site from? And the thing is, I can go into the, the detail report by clicking, for instance, the traffic sources. And then it will show me the details, like the session default channel group, and then all the fields that I selected, user sessions, views, engagement rate, average engagement time. Of course, I can filter whatever conversion I want, but I can also, if I go back into overview, if I want to see more about, for instance, the device categories, like what kind of devices are people using, I can go into here, view dashboard detail report, and it will show me the same report, but then it will fill out the first column for me. It will show device category, desktop mobile, instead of the traffic sources. We can do the same thing with our content. So if I go to this card, I see the top pages on my site. And if I go into here, view dashboard detail report, it shows the same report, but then it fills out the first column for me page path and screen class. And I can show for all, every page, like how many users, how many sessions, what's the engagement rate, what's the average engagement time on that page, how many conversions. Conversions, by the way, it will link to the page where it ha actually happened. So for instance, the thank you page of my contact form will give me a lot of conversions because that, that's the page where that conversion happened. So the last column is probably not the most useful for you, but still, this is a really nice screen that you can revisit over time, like every day, every week. We can get an update of the basic information that's happening on your site without having to dig too deep in your report. Well, that's it for today. I hope you really have enjoyed this video. If you have any question, please leave them down in the comments. Also, please click like and subscribe to help get this channel off the ground and get the message of making better decisions based on your analytics, getting that message across. I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.